So I'm just going to go through the thought process behind the drill. Um, we knew that it needed to be some handling drills um, and I wanted it to be based around a two-on-one. So I don't just want to get a simple two-on-one in because I know the kids are going to be stood around for quite a long period of time. So just something simple as like as this, as doing a little bit of handling before they then going to a two-on-one, just ensures that they get a bit of fitness as well as focus on the two-on-one itself. So I know the, the focus is on the two-on-one drill itself, but I still want to set things out in terms of the handling just to make sure that they focus on some key skills. So that's why I set up the flagpoles there, just so that they ensure that once they've made the pass, that they should still be in line with those flagpoles and just really emphasise it. Rather than it being cones, it's something that they need to travel through. So some really good practice in terms of coaching. Um, although I've done this just for the to see a couple of different perspectives of the drill itself to make sure that everyone understands what it is. Um, it's also obviously good for the coach to be moving around and seeing things from a couple of different angles just to give a bit more feedback. So as we can see in this drill through Ryan, he always tends to go down that short side. Now the reason for that is because it enforces the next guy to hold his depth. So as we go through this, you'll see that at this point here, okay, both people are pretty much going through at the same time. And therefore, the distance between the two ensures that as they come around that corner and they go around, that they've automatically got the depth. Whereas before, with Ryan's, because they're on top of each other, it meant that we, we try to ensure or try to get the kids to go down that short side because then they get the depth by going on the outside. Now this way, the second man's already behind him and now he's playing catch-up. So as we go through this, he's automatically got his depth there and he's at a pretty good level there in terms of his depth and they're both running full out pace to try and execute that two on one. So on this one, with Dan, um, you'll see that his starting position there is really good. He's not on the touchline, but he's just holding his uh, a more central position. Now what that allows him to do is to come straight at Matthew and then last second he's gonna take him out of that side there as he goes through. So he comes straight up, we see him pumping the ball there a number of times. So as he goes through, he's gone once, he's gone twice. And then right as he commits him, as he steps that side there, bang. Third time he gives it. Matthew's still trying to get off, but he's got absolutely no chance to get all the mix use in all the space still. Great 2 and one So as we go through this one, um, the ball player hits like a, a really good line here. So as we see, just before he gets to him, He's already starting to make that movement to go across here. He's going to try and take that defender and take him to the touchline. He's going to try and twist those shoulders so that they're facing in. So as we as we go through it, and he goes through, he steps nice and early just before, and he makes him think. All right. Now, if we look at Mixie's face there, all right, we see that he's facing and he's looking, not the guy in front of him, but at his mate. Okay, now he needs to know that he needs to look at Matthew, the defender. Because if he looks at Matthew, the defender, and he sees what he's doing, he knows that he's starting to push there off his leg, and he's already starting to go for it. So at that point there, he could make that a dummy and just walk straight through, because there's no way Matthew would have been able to get to him. Now instead, Matthew connects there, and he, he would make a really good decision in terms of in a defensive position. So on this one, what we'll see is Matthew comes round, he hits the far touch line straight away and he's running in a straight line there. He's going to come straight up here in line with the touch line. Now because he does that, as we roll it through, he goes straight up and he's got nowhere to stand him. If he goes to the right hand side, realistically what we're seeing at the moment is that's out. Okay, so he's got nowhere to step. Now fortunately, at this point here, the defender he st stands his ground there and he pushes off that left foot and he, com he commits to the tackle. So Matty makes the right decision, goes through, gives a pass, and puts him into space. Yeah, and when we go through the feedback, it's interesting there that the first point that Matty said in terms of if he'd done that again, looking at his own his own performance, what would he do differently, or what was his what was the weakness there? He mentioned straight away his pass in terms of the actual height of the pass, all right, which is good, but actually his main point there is the fact that he ran straight and didn't really commit the defender well enough. So, feedback for this one. As we're coming through here, we probably haven't got the depth that we want, but that's probably because he, the guy on the right-hand side has been a bit lazy and probably hasn't gone around the corner, so it makes it difficult for the attacker. 
but there's exactly the same again, lots of pumping, which is good. He's starting to turn off that side there, but what he's probably done is he's not giving himself enough time and space in between him and the defender here. So as you roll it through, as the time he's done that second one, as he comes back, he looks to pull it too far back. And therefore, Chexy there can try and go in for the tackle and spread himself as far around it as he can so that he hasn't got the pass on. Now, if this guy here was maybe a little bit deeper, all right, and was probably looking at around about there, instead of looking at that, that pass would probably be on. So again, with this one, just coming around the corner, probably got a little bit too much width, which is strange to say to some of the kids. And they might think, what the hell, you always tell me to get as much width as I can. All right, but he's probably gone a little bit too wide. Again, we probably want to hold and probably hold a bit more of the middle ground here. All right, so we can then attack that space going in there. All right. But what I want you to notice about this one is his head movement, all right, and, and where he's looking at. Constantly as he comes forward and just before, he's looking up, yep, he knows where his teammate is. Yep, he's done his ones. Yeah, and at that point there, he's already seen that he's going to come in on him. The defender's committed himself, so now, nice and easy, give the pass out wide there. Probably if we're being really critical, if we look at the distance there between these two, all right, and what sort of depth he has, we should maybe see him a little bit further back here. Because with that pass there, it's pretty close to being a really flat pass or a forward pass. So we're just looking from a different angle now, just to give it a different perspective, so we can just look at it from behind. So starting position there, he comes around the corner, he probably comes a little bit too far, we'd probably want to see him in around about there, coming forward. So he's going to be attacking forward from that space, going up there, and then again, last second, he's going to take him out to that side there. All right. Now in this one, he comes a little bit straight, and he's going straight up and he's just hugging that touch line. So he hasn't got anywhere really to step. Now, the good thing about this one as we go through is if we just roll it back a little bit. Before we done this drill with them, I spoke a few a few times about pumping the ball. So I spoke to them and said that I need them to pump the ball at least twice. Once, yeah, twice, yeah, before he gives it and decides. Third time, he's committed the man. He's stepped in and he gives the pass.